Hello everyone and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Paul Tierney here joined by Gary Spain for the First Division show. Gary, how are things? All good, Paul. Yeah, good, it was a good, good weekend of football. Yeah. yeah, it was, definitely was indeed. And uh, we'll start at the game you were at, Shells 2, 3 e United 2. Was some cracker and some ending towards the end. It was an absolutely unbelievable match, Paul, and a cracking game. And I know we're on different sides of the fence here. I, I definitely think a draw was a fair result. And even watching it back on um, on LOI TV, it was really impressed. The, the Shelburne commentators were actually very fair, and they admitted it was a, a fair result as well. But a, a real um, game that went so many different ways. Uh, Treaty were definitely the better team in the first half, particularly in the, the, the second half or the first half, if you know what I mean. They got a real grip on the, the game. Good goal from Kieran Red Hanlon. Uh, free kick. Mark Loden is just uh, so good in set pieces mm. good delivery into the box felt Kieran Hanlon and he he smashed into the net his first his first goal of the season as well which is always good for a center forward to get off the mark but he has been making a real difference up front with his physical presence as well so one nil up could have had a could have had a second um definitely the better team in the first half uh second half was a total transformation uh Shelburne came out after the break and just took over and really pushed Treaty back. Uh, the goal just didn't seem to be coming. Made a couple of substitutions. Sean Brennan came on. Yo-Yo Magic, Yo-Yo Magdi came on. And uh, but it was probably forty-five minutes of pretty much incessant pressure. And you really, as a Treaty fan, I was just praying for the final whistle. And we're really hanging on, hanging on. Got into the ninetieth minute, and I'm daring to think, yeah, maybe we can just hang on and, and get out with the three points probably it would have been undeserved and uh i said sean brennan sorry it was ryan brennan yeah. um got, got the equalizer and uh in the 90th minute and i thought oh but in fairness they probably deserved it uh there was five minutes of added time signaled and i think we were in the fifth minute of added time and, and shelburne just kept pressing and Yo-Yo Magdi, a Limerick man, again off the bench, the second substitution. Uh, he got the winner. It was a good finish, but oh my God, it was absolutely gutted. And uh, I know the commentator said he got the winner. I tweeted it was the winner as well for Shelburne. Surely it was. <laughs> but um, what a way, a treaty. I mean, Tommy Barrett's side, they're never, they're never beaten. They're showing great heart and great character. Went straight up the other end of the pitch, won a corner, and in the 97th minute, uh, Clyde O'Connell um, finished it at the edge of the six-yard box from the corner, uh, unmarked, and uh, just went absolutely berserk. Some celebrations. It was um, an incredible finish. Three three goals from the 90th minute on. I think in the end it has to be considered a fair result. Um, it felt like a win uh, because it scored so late. Even though one one, it felt like a defeat. But um, from a shell's perspective, I think you would have to be delighted with the second half performance. Um, yeah. Those 45 minutes were as good as I've seen any team this season. And uh, I do expect Shelburne to go on and probably win the division. I think they've got the best squad in the division. And I, I think they'll just kick on from here. Uh, treat From a treaty perspective, I'm just delighted to still be unbeaten. They've played really well from a squad that was cobbled together. And... Uh, We've already gone to Bray, already gone to Galway, and now gone to Shells and, and staying unbeaten, which is some achievement, but another tough game on Friday night away to UCD. Yeah, definitely. And um, I think in terms of Shells, they probably haven't performed as well as they could have in the first couple of games. So that the fact that you're saying it's the best best half of football you've seen from any team this season in the second half, and that's a good, definitely a good show for me anyway. And... Uh, I got to say one thing about Ryan Brennan. Anyway, whenever he comes on, he always grabs a goal. Even last year, he grabbed a couple of goals in the top division, and fair juice to him on that. Um, did did Yo Yo Maddy only came on again? Did he? Yeah, he only came off the bench uh, late on, and he he grabbed a goal. And he was someone yeah. that really impressed me last season with UCD. He was banging yeah. in quite a few goals, but he hasn't um he hasn't had that much game time i think with shells this season but he, he took his chance on friday night and, and and grabbed a goal as well yeah yeah i'm surprised by that as well because i did see ucd a lot myself like yourself and um 
yeah, I, I thought he'd be straight in there. If you look at the amount of goals he got. I know after coronavirus, he kind of took him a couple of weeks, but then he did start scoring. And uh, I mean, we know he's capable. He's done it in the Premier Division as well for UCD. So, you know, that's the stuff from him anyway. And uh, I suppose you're delighted with Treaty. Has this even surpassed your expectations from the start? Or Oh, absolutely. I mean, mm-hmm. it was very much that we only got into the league in the... the, the, the the FEI had to extend the transfer deadline. Treaty got in so late so they could sign players. So um, Tommy Barrett, really, he, in about three days, he brought the squad together. And it, it's just, I, I was expecting we'd be right down at the bottom of the league because, uh, I mean, most of the players in the league were already signed with other clubs. There isn't exactly a big budget there. It's uh, a lot of amateur players. The squad was cobbled together. and But every they're just so well organized and they're really playing for each other there's great unity there in the squad and uh everybody's playing for each other and have picked up some injuries picked up some suspensions and unfortunately anto o'donnell was actually sent off so it was with 10 men the treaty actually equalized as well but um and unfortunately mark walsh looks like he he had, he had a broken jaw from that's well that's another matter but um so and he's going to be a massive loss because he's been a real fine play, playing in the Tipperary League last season with Nina, mm. and uh, and and that's really where the, the players have come from. They've been kind of cobbled together. Mark Ludden uh, was well. I think Galway made a major mistake in letting him go, but he was unwanted by Galway, and I appreciate he couldn't contribute. He couldn't commit to full time football because of his career and everything. But he's mm. been a real revelation at left back, and uh, but more than surpassed my expectations. I think it's unbelievable to think the Treaty are in a battle uh, at the top of the table in, in fourth position. And uh, certainly now we've got to be considered in a battle for the playoff positions. You have to look down the table and see the likes of Bray and Galway, etc. Maybe even Cork that will come good and possibly start moving up the table. But um, I, I couldn't be happy over Treaty start. It's incredible to be still be unbeaten at this stage. Yeah, definitely. That it's fantastic for you, and even let's say myself, long may it continue because it's great to see. And it, as I said, a lot of amateur players getting a chance there as well, like you were saying. And um, after the game, you caught up with uh, Cloyd O'Connell, Tommy Barrett, and Maxime Cogan, and you can listen to the, those interviews now. Gary Spain here for Irish Football Fan TV with Cloyd O'Connell from Treaty United, who scored that sensational. I think it was ninety eighth minute equaliser. Can you talk me through it, Clyde? Um, I don't know, I suppose it's a bit of a blur at the moment. Um, I think we were going into the box and the ref said, lads, look, it's the last kick of the game. Like, um, and I thought, I thought all game there was a bit of space um, around the back post. And I suppose I just gambled. Like, you know, last week I got around the back post um, and got the head for a goal last week. So I just said the same this week. In the first half, I thought there was a bit of space around the back. Um, yeah, I just gambled and I suppose it kind of fell to me and it was a good finish yeah, I'm just happy to come away at a point Yeah, I mean, at 90 minutes you were 1-0 up you probably would have felt like a defeat to draw 1-1 one, one out does it feel like a win? Yeah, I suppose, look um, we're probably disappointed like, you know I gave the way free for the first goal um, and it was just one of them things where the ball went into the box again and they got the first flick on um, whoever wins that first ball I suppose it's either going to be a goal or it's going to get off the pitch for us but uh, I suppose we're disappointed but if you if we would take a point at the start of the season against Shelburne, you would bite your hand off. It's still unbeaten after six games. You've got to be delighted with that. <laughs> yeah, look, it's it's unbelievable. Like it's uh it's a credit to everyone, it's a credit to the staff, the managers, um and obviously the players, like you know, we've uh, we've a really good band. I know we started late, like, but it's been brilliant. Look, we're still unbeaten, it's it's mad to say really, but look, we keep going. We don't we don't stop here now. We want to push for more and keep going. Like this league is this league is open and it's so competitive and uh, really happy with start we've had. And how do you find the transition? You were playing junior football last year with Fairview, won the junior cup, you're the hero in the final. How do you find the step up to senior football? Yeah, I suppose last year was a great year for me. Um, from junior level obviously, but that's not where I wanted to be. I was with Limerick FC for four or five years and I was involved in the first team. Um, and I was unlucky, I thought not to get more games. But sometimes you have to do this, you have to go back to junior level and find your feet. And um, that's what I did. I had a really good year and I just wanted to push on this year and show everyone what I can do. That's great. Thanks, Clark. Tommy, do you, it must feel like you've won, but it must have felt like you, you, you were going to win at 1-0. And... 
Yeah, I probably did. And, you know, at 1 0, we were hanging on. Uh, you know, they got a lot of great, good chances. We, we did some excellent defending, last ditch defending, you know, which. Look, we need to get better. We need to get better. We need to, in the second half, see games out and be a bit more composed. You know, we weren't composed enough in that second half. But you know, we're coming up here and uh, and to put in the performance we did, particularly in the first half. I thought we should have been two up. Um, but you know, in, in the balance of play, Shells probably feel that they deserved it. You know, and I, I would agree with that. that you know, what chances created probably the draw was a, a fair result. Yeah, it was a Sydney to concede two goals so late in the game. Yeah. Yeah, it was upsetting, all right, because you know we we were hanging on so well, and they didn't. Yeah, look, they had a few chances, not like other games where where teams you know didn't create much. They they missed a few chances, and they probably deserved it on the, on the balance of chances created. But in saying that, we probably deserved a couple of more goals as well. We had very clear cut chances as well in both halves, so the game could have been three or four on, to be honest. What does it say about the character of your team? They just don't know when they're beaten. Down to 10 men. I think it was the 98th minute. Yeah, look, they, and you said it there, Gary, that's resilience and character and grace. And, you know, uh, 10 men again, which, you know, uh, is unfortunate. Um, but, you know, I can't fault this group and I'm not going to fault them because they, they just don't give up. And you see that there. 98 minutes as you said and it was a lovely finish actually it was a really good goal and we, we got the we got the corner from a chance created so we keep going and another trip to Dublin next week UCD away another tough game yeah <clears throat> really tough game for us um, you know we're probably going to be down Mark Walsh now it looks like his jaw was broken that tackle that the, he got a yellow card a suspected broken jaw so obviously you know we've a man down the man sent off and we're not happy with that either you know with Shelburne's Max Coogan Max, does that feel like a defeat, conceding so late? Yeah, definitely. Uh, frustrating night. All the boys are disappointed in how it went. Um, but we never really got going in the first half, like call it spade for spade. We showed a bit of character in the second half to get back in it. And obviously it's, it's sickening to, to concede as well last minute. We could have we nicked three points. Yeah, you totally dominated the second half. Your treaty pressed back. Did it feel like you were never going to score? Listen, with the quality we've got on the team, we know we've got goals, you know. So we always have that belief that we'll go in and get goals. But when we're conceding last minute like that as well, it's disappointing. Like, it's if we do our basics and, and defend that set piece, we go, we nick three points tonight. But overall, probably a fair result. Does it say something about your side, the character to score twice in the after the 90th minute? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We don't know when we're beat. Like, we've got character. We've got, we've got on paper, we've got all the elements to go on, you know. Um, it's just about doing it now and putting, putting the actions in. Hopefully we can do that next week. You still have to be happy with your start though. You're still unbeaten and uh, you're right up at the top of the, near the top of the table. Yeah, definitely. You know, we, that's where we want to be. We want to be in around the top of the, t- up top of the table, you know. So uh, if we can maintain that, maintain that, keep the momentum, um, we'll, be, we'll be happy. At Lone Town coming here next Friday night, the tough games keep on coming. Absolutely, we don't. Under, we, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no easy games. You know, every week you have to be on it. You have to put in a performance, um, and we'll be, we'll prepare well this week, and we'll expect them next Friday night. That's great. Thanks, Mac. Cheers, uh, thank special. you. And that was the lad speaking to Gary Spain there, at Talker Park. And uh, we'll quickly move on. Uh, we we'll go on to Wexford FC and UCD. UCD were six 0 victors down at Ferry Carrig Park. Colin Whelan with a hat-trick, Evan Weir, Liam Kerrigan and Adam Lennon got the goals for UCD. But the main talking point probably has to be the red card for Wexford goalkeeper James Corker and after a minute. Gary, did you see it yourself? I did and Paul, I, oh God, I'm, I, I go, I'm going to go back a co- about three years because I, I was in Chesterfield when Jimmy Corcoran was in goal for our under-17s and I, I was fuming that night because... He was sent off by a referee for coming off his line in a penalty shootout. And I, I thought it was one of the worst decisions in the history of I football. Remember it, yeah. it was an absolute. And what's, what's Jimmy now, 20 years of age? I, I only saw this in LOI TV. Obviously, it wasn't down in Ferry Carrick Park. And the first minute of the game, I've actually watched it three or four times. And there's only one camera angle. It was a marginal call. I still don't know whether it was inside or outside the box. Now, the referee ran a long way to make that decision. 
it was borderline at best. Yeah. And even if he decides it was outside the box and handball, was it denying a clear and obvious goal scoring opportunity? I'm not so sure. I think I mean, Jimmy no. could easily have kicked the ball if he was outside the box. And to actually produce a red card and give the free kick right on the edge of the box, I mean, you have to be absolutely sure. And I don't know. It would, there must have been inches in it. it. Maybe if you had three or four camera angles and we had Sky Sports, you could have figured out whether it was inside or outside the box. I can't believe the referee was that certain that it was outside. And then to be that certain that it was a clear and obvious goal-scoring opportunity because he was there. He could have kicked it clear into touch. So Jimmy obviously mm. felt he was inside the area. So I, I don't know, maybe in a past life he's done something to referees because at a very young age in his career, he's been, I don't know, victim of two incredible red car decisions. And uh, it's it's a hugely controversial one. And of course, it, and, and UCD scored from the free kick anyway to compound matters. Now, UCD are flying, they're scoring goals for fun. Who's not to say they wouldn't have gone to Wexford and, and got... Um, a comfortable win anyway. Colin Whelan's on fire, as you said, with the hat trick. And Wexford had a second goalkeeper sent off as well for two yellows. Yeah. So that was less controversial, in fairness. But um, I think the game was pretty much done in the first minute with the the red card and then scoring from the free kick. And uh, but very, very harsh. I really feel for Jimmy Corcoran. I felt for him that night in Chesterfield, and we went out of that under 17 championship on penalties, and the Dutch went on to win it. And who knows what would have happened if Jimmy hadn't been sent off. But uh, I was biased that night, I was very much neutral watching back on LOI TV. But I, I thought I've watched it three or four times. It was. I don't know whether it was inside or outside the box, but even if it was outside the box, it's such a marginal call to make. And I know the laws of the game are the same in the first minute as they are in the 90th minute. But for God's sake, it's just a bit of common sense. You have to look and say, yeah. do you send off a goalkeeper for a clear and obvious... I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it was a, a poor decision. I don't want to be talking about referees. And my father was a referee in the League of Ireland, so I don't want to be talking about referees on this. But, um, oh, it... it I really feel gutted for the for Jimmy Corcoran and for Wexford. But look, UCD, it's they are in flying form. They are scoring. They are free scoring at the top of the table. Colin Whelan, uh, they did really well to hang on to him, and uh, they're going to be right in contention for promotion. They always seem to, despite losing players, to find a way to come back, pull the squad back, and I don't know. Well done to them. Yeah, definitely, and. Uh... They're not a team you want to go down to ten, uh, go, go down to ten men against anyway. I know that for a fact from watching them several times over the last season and a bit. They'll just they'll just crucify you. That's it. They just will, and that's what they done on uh, on Friday. And um, whether it would have been the same result without the red cards, who knows? I, I did see Carl Fitzsimons ended up in goal for Wexford, and it's always interesting to see an outfielder end up in goal. But um, we don't want to see it, obviously, but it's always interesting. It brings back memories of John O'Shea, John Terry, the likes going in. But uh, Brian O'Sullivan is now under a bit of pressure with Wexford, probably has been since the start of the season, really. I, I don't know. I mean, I actually saw them against Treaty and they played really well. And they were probably a little bit unfortunate to lose that game. And I know they went to Talca Park and it was only an own goal beat them for shells. So if you look at the league table, if you look at the results, you'd say, yeah, they're they're um, they're under pressure. But I mean, they are probably one of the lowest budgets in the league. They're another all amateur mm -hmm. team. So I, I think you have to be a, uh, have a bit of patience. I think they will pick up some results. I, yeah. I don't know. They have some good players like Paul Fox, Jack Doherty. I don't know. I think they'll be. I hope he's not under pressure. I hope he is given time because there are. There are some full-time teams in this league. And, I mean, there are some serious budgets there. And then you've got the likes of Wexford, who are just at a different level. So I, I think you have to temper your expectations here. And yeah. uh, I don't think you can read it too much into, okay, it looks bad losing 6-0 at home. I think UCD, in normal circumstances, would go down and would win that game. So even if... Uh, Jimmy Corcoran had been left on. Even if UCD had still scored the free kick, they might, might have gone on to win one or two or three nil. But um, I don't know. I think you have to give the, to, to give him time. You definitely do. Yeah, yeah. The only reason I said that is because I seen a couple of tweets about Wexford saying that he might be under pressure. But again, that's not my opinion. That's just theirs. They're obviously supporters, and 
they're obviously not going to be happy with that but look that's just the way and uh, unfortunately we don't have any interviews from Ferry Carey but we do have a couple of photos and they're up on the Irish Football Fan TV gallery on the website if you do want to have a look at them some fantastic photos there and uh, we now move on to at Lone Town, the league leaders at Lone Town, who were beaten 2-1 at home, probably surprisingly by Cabin Thiele. Uh, Niall Barnes and Ben Hanrahan got the goals for Cabin Thiele, and Adam Wicks, they've got one back for the home side. Now, I was shocked with this result, just because I've seen Cabin Thiele the last couple of weeks, and they just looked a bit shell-shocked from what happened after the Galway, the Galway incident. So, I'm shocked. I've seen Athlone a couple of times as well. They play some lovely stuff, and I genuinely thought they would get the result at home. Gary, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, they're actually the two of the teams in the first division I haven't seen yet. Well, I did see Athlone pre-season, actually, in the markets field, um, but they have made a fantastic start, and I was shocked by the result. I, 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 I tipped Athlone to win. Uh, Cabo had made a great start winning the first two games, but as you said, the, the blow with the Galway game being cancelled and I think Galway subsequently being awarded the points, that seemed to knock the stuffing out of them. And at loan were absolutely flying. They'd been unbeaten. They were at home on, on their pitch. I expected them to beat Cabo. And, uh, but hats off to Cabo and Tilly to go down there and to, to win that. Um, certainly surprised me. And uh, now at loan are going to Talca Park on Friday night trying to bounce mm. back, which for me is an absolute... Uh, well, it's gone. It should be an absolute mm. cracking match at the top of the table. Uh, definitely the game of the weekend in the first division, and that'll tell a lot. And uh, but I think if Shells can bring their second half performance against Treaty into Friday night, I would expect them now to beat Athlone. Athlone probably have overachieved a bit in their the first five games, having taken the thirteen points. But um, it'll be interesting to see how they react now. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I um, I just think as well, do you think it's just a blip maybe for Athlone or it, it's going to be tough to maybe get back to what they were looking for? I mean, they've obviously started so well, they'll want to continue that and maybe they're aiming for the playoffs, maybe they're aiming for that league title. Do you think it's just a blip maybe? or? Yeah, I mean, they did, they did change the squad a lot from last season and they had improved in the second half of last season. But I mean, to bring in the likes of Curtis Bourne, Adam Wickstead, etc., they have... They have brought in some seasoned, experienced um, League of Ireland players. So, um, Killian Cantwell as well. So, they are, I think they're definitely in contention for the playoffs. I don't see them, they, they don't have the, the likes of the squad. They, they, they don't have the Ryan Brennans and the Oyo Magdis to come off the bench like Shelburne had on Friday night. They certainly won't have the squad. And when the games, injury suspensions and that take their toll, but they have made a fantastic start. It is only one game, and I think they will. No, I, I'm not so sure they can get anything on Friday night. Maybe they'll prove me wrong, but I, I do expect them to to definitely challenge for the playoffs, and they are still in in good shape. Uh, the, the the concern, I suppose, from an at loan point of view, is you look over their shoulder. And you've got to look a long way over their shoulder. You have the likes of Bray and Galway still with those more experienced squads and and bigger squads that uh, will probably start making up ground. But I still, I don't see Athlone being in the title race, but I do yeah. see them definitely being in the race for the playoff spots. Fair enough. And uh, just a brief mention on Cabin Thiele, they do have Cove at home next. Can Cabin Thiele push on for this? Because they did start really well, and there are some good players in that squad. And with Pat Devlin as the manager, they've proven they can get into the playoffs and cause trouble for some teams in recent years. They have, and they were so unlucky last season. I know they felt very aggrieved over last season and what happened. They probably, well, they were top of the table for a long while and then they felt they should have been in the playoffs and, well, we'll we won't get into that now. They can certainly challenge. They've probably been surprising for a couple of years. Uh, I've talked before on this show about Kieran Marty Waters, I think is a really quality player. I'm, uh, well, maybe Caventini may not be too happy if I say that he should be playing at a higher level, but... Um, He's someone certainly I think could be playing in the in the Premier Division, and uh, yeah, they're they're well capable of of pushing on, of challenging for the playoffs. If I had to call it, I think maybe they might just miss out again, but they could be there or thereabouts. Uh, I know they've got Treaty United at home in a couple of weeks as well, so that <laughs> might um, that might tell a lot. That that's that, that's actually the last game in this round of fixtures, but um, I think they'll 
could be there or thereabouts. But um, yeah, maybe th that was some win down that loan. So if they can follow that up with a win against Cove, um, yeah, who knows? They could certainly go on a run. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'll be looking forward to I'm actually going to that game this Friday, so I'm looking forward to that. I haven't seen Cove since the start, start after COVID last season. So looking forward to going out and seeing more teams. But uh, we'll swiftly move on. We'll move on to Cove now. Speaking of Cove, they were beaten 4-0 at home by Galway on the weekend. An early red card told for them. Charlie Lyons was sent off just after just 18 minutes. And uh, then Rory Keaton with a double, an own goal, and Corey Cunningham got the goals for Galway. Their first win on the pitch this season. Gary, what do you think of that? Yeah, and three penalties as well for Galway. But um, <laughs> <laughs> they look like, in fairness, I might have been a little bit critical of refereeing earlier on. I, I, these all seem to be deserved. But you always get question marks from a referee. It takes actually quite guts to give three penalties in a game, I think. Um, mm. But um, they seem to be deserved. I don't think core fans can have any complaints. But again, the red card decided this. Um Galway have been probably a, a funny team. I'd seen them. They were the team I most expected to challenge at the top. I thought this division to be between Galway and Shells. It may well still end up being between Galway and Shells, but certainly Shells have been the more impressive, despite maybe not firing in all cylinders. Mm -hmm. I thought Galway were very fortunate to get a 94-minute equaliser against Treaty when I saw them. And probably a bit fortunate to get a, another late draw at home to UCD. Um, that seemed to be a cracking 2-2 draw, though. I know Jared was at that. Um, yeah. But this looks like they, they finally found their feet, got the first win, and, and just blew Cove away. Um, I'd seen Cove as well, actually, against Treaty, and uh, that was kind of a, another game was uh, the red card made quite a difference because Treaty had been on top of goal up after half an hour and uh, then lost Charlie Fleming, and then Cove took over and uh, scored a brilliant goal and, and probably feel that well, I know Stuart Ashton definitely felt they should have won it. But um, they could have lost it at the end as well, actually. But um, it, it's probably not a surprise that Galway finally found their feet, finally scored some goals. They have a full-time squad. They have an excellent manager in John Caulfield. And I think they're going to win a lot more games than they're going to lose. Are they good enough to make up the gap on Shelburne? Um, that I'm not so sure. But I would certainly expect Galway to, to at least end up in the playoff positions. I think they're going to get a lot more wins. Maybe that result is just the, the, the fill up the need, the kickstart to go on and, and start picking up some points. Um, I, I don't see Cove challenging for the playoff positions. I think Cove will probably be in the bottom two or three positions. I think, again, it, it comes down to budget as well. I mean, they are obviously a part time amateur players. And. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for them to compete mm -hmm. with the, yeah. the full time. So uh, they are always capable of picking up results. They have some good players. Um, I, I know David O'Leary is someone we who was that used to be at Limerick FC. He's been at Cork City. He's someone I, I, I thought would really um, kick on, maybe play at a higher level. But um, he's still a very good player for the first division. Um, but. Uh, an interesting one at the weekend for you with, with Cabo and Cove. I probably maybe slight, slightly favour Cabo, but you never know. And mm -hmm. uh, Galway are somebody I I really do think they will be a danger from the next few weeks and could well start going on a run now. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's what they should be looking for as well. I know they have Bray up next this Friday, I'm pretty sure, at home, which is an important game for both sides considering how they've both started a bit slower than maybe we thought they would have. But um, t again, yeah, Galway, very capable side. And I agree with you. I thought they'd be right up there with Shells competing for the league title. But unfortunately, it hasn't worked out like that yet. But it's a long season and it will keep going like that. And uh, we'll move on there to our final game of the week, the game I was actually at. Bray Wanderers nil, Cork City nil. The only nil all in the two divisions. What, what a pick by me anyway. But we'll go into it. It wasn't too bad. Maybe the second half was a bit dull, but the first half was all action. Bray running a lot of the play. Brandon Kavanagh being a part of it. He looked like he was having fun out there for most of the game. And um, yeah, he was unlucky early on. He hit the post from a deflected free kick. Uh, a lot of them were calling that it went over the line, but it didn't. And then Mark McNulty made a great save off the rebound from, I think, Richie O'Farrell, I think it was. And uh, Bray just pressed a lot of it. Cork were playing on the break for the majority of the game. 
and uh, it told they were just pretty much trying to stop the rot. Obviously, they had four defeats from four after winning against Cove on the opening night. But again, they were just playing on the break, and they did nearly get in a few times. Jack Walsh was mainly at the heart of it. He had a couple of chances, which he probably could have done better with. As I said, the second half, not much went on. Towards the end, it kind of livened up. Bray really pushed for it. Gary Shaw came on. They left Joe Doyle on. He started, and they left him on. They had two lads up there. Brandon Kavanagh had more to aim for. And right at the end, Gary Shaw got the ball, ran past the Cork defence, uh, actually headed it past the Cork defence, showed a bit of sharpness, which is good, good to see for him, him and for Bray. And uh, had a shot, it was rolling into the goal, and Cork left back Ronan Hurley cleared it off the line, and it was agonising for Bray. And you could see Gary Cronin across the pitch. He was gutted that it didn't go in, because it would have been a huge three points for them. But in the end, it's actually a very good point for Cork, really. It stops the rock, and Colin Healy would be delighted with that. But um, even after the game, I spoke to Gary Crown and, and he's just devastated. He can't believe that they've drawn five games. They've been so unlucky a couple of times as well. And um, yeah, I mean, Gary, do you have any thoughts on those two sides? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it depends what way you look at it from a Bray point of view. They, they, they only lost once to Athlone, who mm-hmm. were the league, the league leaders, or else you can say they haven't won any games. And as you said, they have been unlucky. Probably feel they're unlucky not to beat Treaty in the opening night. Played really well at Tolka and drew 3-3. I think that the main reason they've been unlucky is that you mentioned Gary Shaw, and he's been... I'm still not sure if he's fully fit, but he's been out injured. And if you have a fully fit Gary Shaw... Uh, he starts every week and, and he'll score goals, particularly in the first division. And mm-hmm. uh, they have Daryl Lynch. I know he's only a young lad. I was really impressed with him last season. Uh, he's out with injury as well. And uh, it's good to see Joe Doyle is back, but I think he's had injury problems. So yeah. They've had injury problems and it's all been up front. So Bray are another team I expect to be right up there challenging for the playoff positions. Uh, they would have been an outside bet probably for the title. Probably felt they should have won the title last season. They just got caught at the end by Drogheda. So um, th- that that game in Galway will be will be quite a match. Um, Cork City probably the being the biggest disappointment this season. Uh, mm-hmm. Came down from the Premier Division. I know their fans had high hopes that they'd go straight back up. As you said, got the win on opening night against Cove and went on that run of four defeats. Uh, probably maybe they'd feel a little bit unlucky to lose to Treaty. It was at 1-1, that game could have gone either way and Treaty got a late winner with 10 minutes to go. But um, four defeats on the bounce for Cork City in the first division will not keep the fans happy. So it's good from Colin Healy's point of view. They stopped the rot. I think they'll be very happy with the point in Bray. And, uh, but... And they may still get back up into challenging for probably for the playoffs, but I think the title has probably gone beyond them. And uh, Cork City are probably looking at another season in the first division, which won't go down well on Lee's side. It's probably a way to look at it. I mean, this you've got Cork, Limerick, and Galway, the second, third, and fourth cities in the Republic are only in the first division. So um, yeah. it, it is a bit lopsided in the Premier Division. And... Uh, Munster apart from, and Waterford at the bottom so it's not a good time for Munster or even for the, the west of Ireland if you include Galway and that but um, anyway I, you can't argue that the teams in the Premier Division are there on merit but um, it, it doesn't look like it's going to be a, a good season for Cork and uh, I, I would expect Bray to turn it around particularly when they have Gary Shaw fully fit Joe Doyle, Daryl Lynch they, they, they will start scoring goals and moving back up the table yeah, definitely. As you mentioned, it's all in the attack for them. Like Brandon Kavanagh, as good as he is, he does need someone to link up with up there. If there's no one there, it's going to be a lot tougher for him. And uh, But again, he's such a good footballer. As I said, he looked like he was having fun at times out there. The other day. I think he got two nutmegs in a row at one stage. Like, I mean, I wouldn't even dream of doing that playing football. Like, you know. But uh, again, ultimately, it's the goals that matter, not nutmegs. So that's it. And uh, after the game, I did speak to Gary Crown, who was a bit disappointed, and you can have a listen to that now. Paul Tane here, Deutsch Football Fan TV, joined by Gary Crown after Bray nil, Cork nil. Gary, how do you feel after that disappointed? Very, um, it's, it's hard to take not winning football games, you know, and uh, that's obviously where we want to be. Um, 
you know, it's sort of the games are going the same way against us. We get to a certain point in the game and, and, and teams are sitting in against us and trying to catch us on the break and we're, I suppose, good on the ball and good in possession generally. Or, you know, some instances, we, we, we have to score goals and that's the bottom line. And uh, we're just a little bit, obviously, we're light and we've, um, we're just a bit unfortunate with the way this bodies are at the moment. But, you know, we score early, it's different because teams have to come out, like, you know, and uh, we had the opportunities in the first half and unfortunately, uh, you know, we didn't take them. And yeah. we were left with, uh, with, with no goals again. Yeah, and uh, one good point, I suppose, is Gary Shaw got back. He got on a bit earlier than he did last week as well. It was unlucky right at the end there. Yeah, he's done actually well. A little bit of instinct, you know, that's what he has. He's still not back to full. You could see it in his movements. He's still not back to full, um, to the full Gary Shaw that we know. You know, that extra 5% over a certain a certain um Parts of the park, but he done great for the chance, and you know, yeah, it was cleared off the line. It was good clearance by their by their defender. It's uh, just disappointing. Just waiting to see the net ripple, and you know, I know, you know, the lads are adamant. Obviously, in the first half, the ball was well over the line for for that yeah. opportunity. And just disappointed it wasn't seen. If that's the case, and but I just knew by the reaction, they knew it was well over the line. They were all fairly quick over to the referee, and it just changes the game. You get that little bit. Of, well, it's not luck; it's a goal. You get your goal, and and, and the the opposition have to come and try and get something, and. And they open up again for us, but um, yeah, you know, the longer games go on, and the more um, you know, you don't get your nose in front. It gives the opposition something to hold on to, and same again tonight, like other games. Yeah, and obviously Galway up next. What's your thoughts on that one? I look career. It's every single game is tough. You look at the league again. I mean, it's we haven't won a game yet, and we're not a million miles off it. And uh, we just got to look at our, after our own shop at the moment and um, sort out what what needs to be sorted out in front of goal as as, as quickly as we can. We just need a we need our, you know, our first team and top players back um, soon. That was Gary Cronin speaking to myself at the Carlow grounds after Friday's nil-nil draw. And uh, that's the end of the show, unfortunately, lads. Uh, we'll have another preview show coming up now in the next couple of days. So thanks very much for watching and please make sure to like and subscribe.